for frontline conversations i'm absolutely delighted to have this very important word with an mp from srinagar aga rola mehdi who gives representation to his people after 6 years there has been no representation there is no representative politics in the indian parliament in any assembly for people of jammu and kashmir so it's significant that he is here as a voice in indian parliament he is one of the three mps from the valley two are from the national conference and one is engineer rashid who won while being in tihar jail but we'll get to that later first sir what is it like to be in parliament now today it's it's like coming to an institution which is uh, which betrayed you which is uh, for many of us the most of us would believe that that's the temple of democracy and it's very hard to digest that the temple of democracy that you would want to enjoy in, in many ways and cherish those that uh, that journey from from assembly to the highest temple of democracy but it reminds me of uh, how this institution betrayed the people of jammu and kashmir and how institutionally i used this word some other day at an event how institutionally this uh, institution bull- bulldozed the rights of people of jammu and kashmir we believed in uh, the principles and the principality of this institution in 1947 we thought this institution is a is a guarantee that this nation will function function democratically and it will function with the spirits of of the constitution but this institution reminds me that uh, this is this is the institution which not only went away from the spirits of democracy but took a decision which was undemocratic and that is uh, removal of article 370 Uh, taking away the dignity of the people of Jammu and Kashmir, the rights, the democratic rights, the, the constitutional rights, the uh, basic reason for which we uh, acceded to the Union of India. So, this institution uh, has a bad. I mean, uh, it it gives you bad uh, memories. It gives you bad feeling, which I would not want to have uh, in a democracy. I would want to come and cherish this journey, but this is sort of a struggle to. come here to at first level remind this institution what it was for what it stands for uh, what it should work as so there's a lot uh, beneath uh, yeah. uh, this journey from from assembly to parliament and you've been three term uh, mla before you are now an mp but for the, an institution such as indian parliament which has also brought about significant changes in this election and you have in every chance you have uh, got to speak in parliament in this new parliament you have managed to make an impact i have noted that you have put forth your point of view and there was an argument uh, with the government uh, speaker and the speaker did not stand by you when you said that it was uh, th- there was no debate over 370 hmm. and they responded that it went on for so many hours hmm. have we solved that matter that there was no parliamentary debate uh, that that's not solved and you don't get a chance to solve that and that would only be solved when this this government accepts uh, the mistakes that it has made and accepts the fact that it rep- represents a democracy and in that democracy they have to function democratically the fact that i wanted to point towards is that the removal of article 370 was done in a rush and that decided the fate of uh, uh, almost 13 million people and that decided the fate of a state uh, to which you asked uh, 70 years or 75 years ago you asked them to uh, exceed with with this union to make this union secular uh, visibly secular and functionally secular and that would add the addition of that state would add to the charm of the secular uh, nation at that moment you needed jammu and kashmir and you asked the people of jammu mm-hmm. and kashmir for their will and when you took away uh, the rights and the dignity of the people of jammu and kashmir you didn't even bother to ask them and you sent sent a notice through through governor to the people of jammu and kashmir that your rights uh, have been taken away your mm-hmm. your status is degraded your constitutional identity is removed and that was all done in a uh, in one day in, in a strike of a pen august 
August 5. 5. And so we are coming to the 5th so that, anniversary. Yes. So that's not the way you, you I mean, uh, legislate on issues like that. And what I wanted to say is that you did it. And I wanted to remind that speaker his duty and that's, that's the Indian, what... The yeah, speaker, the, Mr. Ombilla. Yes, 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 yes. That's the context of my, uh, that little speech. I wanted to tell him while that all legislation was being done and that debate was, was being held in, in parliament, your member of parliament, because he's a custodian of all the uh, members of the parliament, your member of parliament from Sri that, that, that was Farooq Abdullah Saab, mm. he was put in house arrest or he was put in a jail, so mm. to say. You didn't bother to ask uh, the government where my MP is and for what crime he has been put behind bars or put under house mm -hmm. arrest. And he had the right to come and participate in that debate and represent the people of Jammu and Kashmir. So I can say while that debate was being held, while that legislation was being done about the people of Jammu and Kashmir, we didn't have the fair chance to participate in that debate and to participate in that mm -hmm. legislation. So in that legislation, so we were unrepresented. Unless there is some legal intervention which appears unlikely, we, I don't see a reversal. I'm being a realist. I'm not being an idealist. Here. I agree with that. I yeah. don't see a reversal. But what I have for you is that on the Supreme Court of India mm. has set September 30th, mm. just now two mm. months, mm -hmm. as the deadline to have state elections right. in Jammu and Kashmir. Now, what is interesting about that uh, order of the Supreme Court is that I'm not now Jammu and Kashmir is is a union territory, <laughs> so we are having elections to a union territory. Union territory. So that order could have also raised questions about the status. Right. It has not, right. but nevertheless, a deadline has been put. Right. Do you? I understand the Article 370 feeling, but that is irreversible. Do you see any potential gains in for the rights of the people yeah. through democratic means? By, rest by having, do you see the government moving towards an assembly? I can't even call it an assembly, an election <laughs> to a union territory. <laughs> but so if I say by mistake assembly, <laughs> let me just say, call it assembly. Assembly election. for a union territory. Assembly, assembly, assembly for, for a union right territory. Union that would be correct. Yeah. Do you see uh, that happening in less than two months? Well, first of all, for, uh, for me, Article 370 is not irreversible. That is pretty much reversible. The decisions that were taken on. August 5, it's a matter of time and how. Okay. So, but since your question is not uh, for that, mm -hmm. let's keep that part aside. Uh, the government at the moment is trying to find ways and what is visible in Jammu and Kashmir is trying to find the ways to make excuses not to hold the elections in Jammu and Kashmir. Though my narrative and my purpose of coming to a parliament is not begging for elections. Mm. Uh, that's the least I could ask for. I mean, that mm. that's the least we could go down to. My own purpose is not asking and begging for elections. My own purpose is to elevate the status of that assembly uh, 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 to the level where it was, to elevate the institution oh, to yeah. the level where it was. But generally speaking, since the uh, Supreme Court has given a directive uh, to this government, in a natural course, uh, a government should have started the I mean, process for the elections. But that deadline says the month uh, month of September, and you can't see anything happening mm. in Jammu and Kashmir. And on the other side, the while our brave hearts are giving their lives uh, in Jammu and Kashmir, the political ecosystem uh, of BJP are making noises, making those uh, incidents or militancy related, terrorism related incidents an excuse for not holding elections. So therefore, you can sense that this government is not. Uh, I mean, willing to hold elections in Jammu and Kashmir. So, you know, the renewed violence in the Jammu side of the border in new sectors. Mm -hmm. uh, suddenly, where soldiers, 11 soldiers have apparently died mm -hmm. in the month of July alone, according to a media, media figure. Is this entirely the Pakistan regulars who are doing it or is it uh, proxies or how do you see it in the Jammu, you know, new what is going on? Can well, you explain I'm not, it? I'm not privy to the information and unfortunately we are, I mean, we are away from the institutions. We, the people of Jammu and Kashmir, are away from the institutions. All the institutions from from administration to policing mm. and security uh, grid is all under the control of Delhi and people from outside the state, I um, mean, control this. Therefore, all the information and 
counter insurgency plans and all that that you must have is not with us i'm not privy to that but one what one could sense is that i don't feel i don't think that they are pakistani regulars but they may be proxies and one can say that most of them are not uh, uh, the citizens of Jammu and Kashmir, they are not okay. Uh, so it is outside locals. elements who are outside elements. But the question is, these incidents, I mean, uh, bring the attention towards the fact that we used to say that 370 has nothing to do with militancy. 370 is an article of faith which is pro nation, which is pro the idea of India. This is an argument against militancy. This is an mm. argument, 370 is an argument, a substantial argument, mm. a substance against the idea of separatism. Mm. This regime came uh, on a, uh, I mean, uh, on a campaign saying that whatever is happening in Jammu and Kashmir is happening because of 370 and they removed it undemocratically and unconstitutionally, mm. they removed it. But after five years, you could see all those elements playing still playing in Jammu and Kashmir, which used to play before the, the removal of 370. Therefore, this vindicates the fact that militancy had nothing to do with Article 370. Those who hold guns and those who use gun and violence do not believe in the Constitution of India. Those who believed in Article 370 believed in Constitution of India. Therefore, for them, mm. the idea of India does not exist. They don't want to accept the, uh, Jammu, 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 the state of Jammu and Kashmir as a part of part of India. That's why you can see that with or without 370, their violence continues, their plan of uh, their actions continue and we continue to see the militancy. And this has now turned to the places, the hotbed of militancy, the new hotbed of militancy have become those areas where you couldn't, I mean, you wouldn't see any militancy or militancy related incident happening before the removal of 370. Yeah. This hotbed has shifted from Kashmir Valley hmm. to Jammu, to those regions where yes. it was unprecedented. unprecedented. And I mean, new areas of militancies, uh, hmm. militancies is, I mean, emerging. And the question now is a time that the people of the entire nation hold this government Accountable, accountable because we we lose the lives the the jawans the civilians yeah. these are all lives yeah and we continue to lose that you have indicated that the uh, upping of violence in jammu mm. and the attack on indian army mm. positions and soldiers and all mm. that can all that's also one of the factors that could contribute towards not holding elections to the assembly that right? should not be a factor contributing that that's unfortunately an excuse for the ruling regime, mm. for not holding elections. Kashmir is, to my knowledge, it used to be the most militarized place in the when, world. When we had is elections so? oh. in 1996, mm. I mean, the militancy had taken over entire Jammu and Kashmir, barring certain right. uh, districts. The militancy was at, at its peak. Okay. The militants were at every nook and corner. Mm. And we went with the idea of democracy, that de democracy mm. cannot be defeated. We mm -hmm. held the elections and successfully held the elections. Today, when the militancy is not as as bad as it uh, was, the idea is is reversed. Then at that time, you'd go with the democracy to mm -hmm. fight mm -hmm. militancy. Now you make the incidents an excuse for for surrendering or, or not uh, for for denying or not giving the people of Jammu and Kashmir an opportunity of democracy. I think I covered the election when Atal Bihari Vajpayee was the Prime Minister of India. 2002 or 3? 2002, yes. Two. And when he made that Insania yes, yes, Jamuriya. Yes, that was my first <laughs> assembly election. And so I, I covered it. So the BJP has been, historically the party has held a good election True. by the mm. standards of Kashmir At elections. Time, yes, yes. Uh, it was a good election that was conducted in Kashmir in the sense that it had more, a reasonable amount of credibility. Let me, can I, am I wrong I mean, that's, that? that's, uh, that's a different debate, but for the optics, for the, for the narrative, I can agree with it. With can yes, they, mm -hmm. they, they brought certain narratives which gave a, a certain amount of credibility mm -hmm. to the process itself. And that's how India functioned and that's how Atal Bihari Vajpayee himself functioned. Yeah, yes, he did, he did. So, at the moment, uh, I mean, every opportunity is used to deny people of Jammu and Kashmir uh, their right to democracy and try to decide for themselves. So your priority right now is 
you would like to see an election, but you also think that upgrading to an assembly status is extremely crucial. I mean, not only upgrading to uh, assembly, uh, uh, the state status, uh, the status of state. State, the state. For me, it's, it's, it's a fight for the, the uh, I mean, reversal of the decisions taken on August 5. For me, it's, I mean, uh, to be uh, to be brutally honest, this oh. is a forced relation at the moment between Jammu and Kashmir and the rest okay. of India. I don't want my, I, I, I'm like many other people, thousands of us gave blood for the idea of India, for, for, for the uh, democracy and the mm. principles of, of this constitution. We gave blood for that. We, that, that relation for which we gave blood was by our will and we could find some dignity. We could, I mean, feel the existence in, in, in that relation. At the moment, and I'm one among them. I have been speaking about that this many times. Thousands of us have given blood uh, for this. My father was assassinated. I Your mean, father was assassinated? Yes, he was assassinated. Mm. By militants? By militants. His car was blown uh, Which year uh, with was an it? IED, year 2000. Mm. So, this is an idea for which we have given, uh, given our blood. Mm. So, at the moment, we don't feel that that dignity we don't feel that relation mm. today what we feel is is a forced relationship we are a second class citizen of this nation mm. and when we acceded to the union of india we never thought of we were never told mm. that you will be a second class citizen and your status will be degraded i have not surrendered i, am not, I have not given in to the fact that our status is reduced our constitutional guarantee is taken my struggle and my fight may be long and tough, uh, but I have not given up. So, therefore, my priority is not the return of statehood. Statehood mm. is, I mean, is not my priority. A state with the constitutional rights and status that it had, that was promised to it, mm. which was a sovereign promise and delivered through the article of, a cons of, of the constitution, I want that status back. I want that constitutional guarantee functional in Jammu and Kashmir. I want that relation mm. for which we gave our blood. Therefore, this status is something in which I feel it's a forced status as well as a relationship. But, Having said that, yes. Yeah, but I but, think I'm very happy to see you in parliament because there is no root but democracy, no matter how tough the state might be. Maybe, I have a question to ask you, which I had not intended. But do you think that the politics of India, of a dominant party in India, plays Kashmir through a strategic uh, thing or is it through a Hindu Muslim prism? Not He's saying that the refugees have, uh, you know, pundits left the valley so on. Unfortunately, that... not. No, it's not a strategic move. It's not a strategic policy. It's a pure political and electoral, uh, I mean, narrative and policy that this regime has come up with. It's a pure policy of, I mean, creating a ghost who doesn't exist ghost of an extremist militant Muslim, mm. extremist Muslim with a state mm. who is a threat to the majority population. Mm. And for that ghost, the best identity that, that they could get, uh, that ghost is, I mean, the people of Jammu and Kashmir, the state of Jammu and Kashmir, a Muslim majority state with a state, yeah. with con constitutional and democratic strength mm. and representation. Mm. and. Uh, there's no better option for an, yeah. a regime or an ideology. They need a villain. Hmm. This ideology can only survive while there there's a villain for them. Or there's a villain for them. The to Muslim say, as a villain. So yes. Kashmir is part of it. So Kashmir saying. is uh, part of that alienation, hmm. polarization hmm. through which they get the... Uh, you from. mentioned delimitation. I want to know. Because the word used elsewhere is gerrymandering. Hmm. Hmm. What has been... Let's say you were an MLA three mm. times. Mm. How has the BJP or the regime or whichever uh, platform looked at it, how was it done in order to defeat what purpose? What was the intention? Can you just give, so, so, so that the audience can understand why Dean limitation sometimes is politically motivated. In, in, is it indeed so? Is it just about population? Sometimes, I don't know about sometimes, but this time it was politically motivated and people of uh, the rest of India can come and take this. Please tell uh, me, can yes. you illustrate with one for example? A uh, case for a study and see. They, uh, I mean, they came up with, with an idea that uh, BJP can uh, somehow manage numbers with which they can, they can get a Hindu chief minister. 
hmm. in Jammu and Kashmir. Hmm. This is in the scheme of things to one day tell the uh, majority, a big section of the majority Hindu population that now we have a Hindu chief minister in Jammu and Kashmir. I mean, in a natural course, if a Shia can come from a Sunni dominant uh, you are a Shia from a Sunni, just to clarify. It is a natural and normal process with the acceptability of the people. I come from, in a sort, I come from a minority in, of sorts. Hmm. I don't believe the, in that, of sorts. Shias in my constituency are 1%, 99% are, I mean, uh, Sunnis. If people could accept a person like me and give him uh, the representation, the mandate to represent, this could also happen uh, with a Hindu citizen of Jammu and Kashmir in a natural course. Mm. If you could see a Sikh prime minister in a natural course, in a normal course, that's fine. Jammu and Kashmir, people of Jammu and Kashmir were always ready mm. for that normal course. If someone with merits and political merits and mm. with, with all these I mean, political qualities, quote unquote, could come up and be a chief minister. Mm. But the idea of BJP is a forced one. That's not a normal process. That's a forced one. Therefore, the difference, I wanted to make this difference. Their idea is a forced one. They want to force, change the numbers in the assembly. That's why they started the delimitation process. Mm. And in Jammu, they threw the uh, Muslim populations from uh, some Hindu dominated constituencies where they were in sub in Jammu region, they, where the Muslims were in substantial so numbers. So, to make they, it possible that, in just to explain, delimitation means redrawing the maps of boundaries of constituencies, right? On the basis of demography. On the basis of demography. So, you, 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 you gerrymandering means you do it in such a way that a Muslim population does not have the capacity to lose the advantage or yeah, are yeah. at the disadvantage. Same happened for. That was for uh, assembly uh, segments, mm -hmm. assembly constituencies. The other thing that they did for the uh, parliamentary constituencies, uh, Jammu parliamentary constituency had a substantial Muslim population from Poonch and Rajuri, okay. which is called Pir Panchal, mm -hmm. had a substantial. To make it all time 100% guaranteed Hindu constituency, they took the uh, Poonch and Rajuri uh, districts of uh, Jammu region mm. and put it with South Kashmir Valley constituency, Anantna constituency. Uh, and there's a huge range of mountains, Himalayan mountains called Pir Panchal in between. Uh -huh. There's no connect. The natural connect is between Rajuri and Jammu, Punch and Jammu. There is no connect between. But it has been connect. done. They took and I mean, put that population in. Therefore, what happened? the Muslim population was added to a constitu constituency which was already a Muslim dominant constituency. Oh. Now that gives an advantage to Jammu uh, constituency. Are we talking Lok Sabha? Or are we I'm talk talking about Lok Sabha Lok Sabha. So right Is now the BJP has two seats from the Jammu seats. region. Uh, from Jammu uh, region. You have uh, the national conference has two. Two seats from uh, Kashmir. Kashmir Valley that is Srinagar my constituency. Uh -huh. And South Kashmir, Anantanar constituency. Uh -huh. And Rami then the two are Ladakh. Uh, one is from Ladakh. Ladakh that yeah. is in, independent. Uh -huh. And the other is from North Kashmir, Baramula, engineer Yes, yeah, so that's engineer yes, seat. So, so right now, so the BJP has managed to win its two Lok Sabha seats from uh, Jammu region. Jammu region. Jammu region. You know? And they had their proxies in, in Valley uh, for whose advantage they try to delimit the Who are the, the proxies of the BJP? Please All elaborate for me. Sajad Lone is, his party is, is one. a proxy, okay. Uh, the uh, Apni party, they call it uh, Alta Bukhari. Uh -huh. That is Openly, a proxy. He, okay. uh, he said that he, he, he wants to and he is happy to work with BJP and he's glad mm. that he get, gets the support of BJP. And there that are, party didn't do at all what they, they thought. They lost their deposit. They lost uh, their deposit. They, yeah. they lost their deposit and the other party from the no north, uh, People's Conference, lost the elections mm. badly. So people knew it. Uh, they, they are working so, for the interest of BJP and that's why they were And then what, what, may I just ask you because everybody in Delhi used to know Gulam Nabi Azad. What happened to him? Another proxy. Uh, thank is you he, for the name. Do you, is he, we all knew him. He was a very yes. pleasant <laughs> person. He was chief minister. All Delhi journalists knew. Is he also seen by you as a proxy? Unfortunately, he, f he fell very down. I mean, from a position where he was, and a status that he enjoyed, and, and the work that he could, the service that he could do to the politics of India, he fell very down to, I mean, 
to a level where he he chose to serve the interests of BJP, mm -hmm. and he, uh, I mean, he uh, planted, I mean, uh, candidates uh, in the areas where if a Muslim candidate is added in the fray, the advantage goes to BJP. BJP. You can get the example so, of uh, okay. certain those things from any place. So you you are describing him also as a proxy. He did that job, yes. But then, okay, but then the politics of Jammu and Kashmir can, on such a wide range... Uh, fortunately, the people of Jammu and Kash Kashmir are politically very, I mean, up to the mark and yeah, they are yeah. up to the situation. They, because of the, uh, I mean, this, uh, the crisis they have been yeah, through yeah. for the last 30 years, they are politically very mature. They can sense who is who and what is yeah. he up to. They sense anyone who was close to, I mean, serving the interests of BJP in Jammu and Kashmir, was shown their Was shown their way. Absolutely, yeah. So now I want to get to that's why I want to ask you about the phenomena of, I would call it a phenomena, Engineer Rashid, mm. who defeated Umar Abdullah, mm. one of the leaders of your party, mm. of the family of your party, in Baramulla seat. Mm. And he was in jail. Engineer Rashid, the reason he was, he remained in jail and somehow he managed to defeat him by two lakhs. Almost. Almost two lakh votes, and uh, how? So at the same time, this happens in an election, whereas you managed to win mm. very convincingly. So when New Delhi was saying, "Oh, see the people of Jammu and Kashmir, it has been successful, taking away Article 370 and all," that they are now going to, you know, New Delhi's proxies were also in the fray, but they defeated each one of the proxies. Right. But they also. Uh, defeated Omar Abdullah hmm. and they chose someone who is incarcerated, who is a symbol of resistance to the Indian state, hmm. who is in jail, who will not come out of jail in the foreseeable future. So in the future, can we say that the people of Kashmir could use the instruments of democracy to subvert the agenda of the Indian state? Is that what it shows, the victory of uh, Engineer. For me, the election of Engineer Rashid is a combination of two factors. One is the fact that you just said that uh, there was a sentiment and there is a sentiment. And a sentiment which also I would want to believe that I represent. Uh, that whatever happened with us uh, or on August 5, 2019 is completely unacceptable. Mm -hmm. Completely. We are on the same page, mm. every one of us. There may be then different levels. I believe in the constitution of India. I believe in the functional democracy of India, not the status that we have, the status of democracy at the moment in India. I, flee, I believe in fully functional democracy, and that is the idea of India. I don't believe in, uh, I mean, extreme uh, ideologies. There are levels to it. I am. I represent a sentiment which has not accepted the decisions of uh, August, August 5. Then there is a sentiment which goes beyond that and the, I do not, I mean, uh, represent that. In Engineer Rashid's case, all the levels would have combined, must have combined. Mm. There, there are chances. And there was one added factor to that, and that was sympathy. Mm. That was pure emotions and sympathy. His, his children went around. I mean, campaigning to every nook and corner, asking for one simple thing. Mm. Your vote is a key for the release of our father. Otherwise, he'll be hanged. And no one knew that his case does not hang him, that does not go to the extent hanging him. He's not likely to be hanged. He's not likely to be hanged. And I pray for his release mm. in whatever case he is, I mean, booked. UAPA case. Yes, sir. I pray for his release. What I'm trying to say is the emotion was that with our vote, Hmm. this individual can get released. So it was a combination of two things, a sentiment and the sympathy, this emotion. So there's not a clear-cut answer to what happened, uh, what was the leading factor uh, in the election of Ejden Rashid. But what you just pointed out to, that's a reality, that, that remains is, a re reality. It's a reality. And uh, for many reasons, yes, for genuine reasons as well, hmm. If you want uh, the people of Jammu and Kashmir to express and want them express not violently, not mm. otherwise, democracy is the only way for them it to express. It is the only way. 
for them but to at express. The same, and at the same time, whatever comes from there, yeah. democratically, you have to respect that. If you do not want, yeah. see, I and people like me, thousands of them, hundreds of thousands of them, mm. do not believe in violence. We have stood against violence. Mm. I repeat, we have given blood mm. against yeah. violence. You said your father yeah. was assassinated. Yeah. Huh? So we'll always believe. Even Sajjad Loan, actually, I first met him after his father had been assassinated. Right. So this is a history of so Kashmir. Huh? If we come up and speak, express democratically mm. through these institutions, whatever the opinion, whatever the narrative, whatever the mandate is, mm. the rest of India needs to respect that. But here I have to ask you a slightly tricky, sensitive question because it suggests that the your, you have won a very convincing mandate. There is another representative of the national conference but Umar Abdullah a former chief minister has been rejected mm. by the people in Kashmir Valley so that there is a mess there is Mehbubha Mufti also her party PDP lost has lost everything mm. I mean I have known both Umar and Mehbubha very right. personally right. Uh, you know and uh, so I asked you that is this also the people of Kashmir choosing rejecting some of the parties which were traditionally seen who played within the democratic system in pdp's yeah. case it was anticipated uh, because it's fresh in the memories of people of jammu and kashmir that uh, many of us believe that had bjp not given the way to uh, mm. the state of jammu and kashmir in 2014 things would not have turned as they turned in 2019 we offered BJ pdp unconditional support and told them that we will support you from mm. outside, do not go within mm. uh, with BJP for an alliance. Uh, but they didn't heed to that, they didn't listen to the people of Jammu and Kashmir, they didn't listen to national conference, they went with BJP and then started things started turning the way they turned. Mm. So that's fresh in the, uh, I mean, collective memory of the people of Jammu and Kashmir. That, that was a reason one could anticipate that BJP, PDP does not have a uh, uh, electoral chance at the moment. Their fight was for their survival for their mm. existence to show that they are still there, the organization mm. is still there. Uh, in case of uh, Mr. Omar Abdullah, I mean, no one anticipated it and th there was no such undercurrent. One okay. could at least feel that there is an undercurrent which is against national conference mm. or Nehru. Omar Abdullah in that constituency. There was nothing like that. Mm. It was all about national conference versus PC, which was seen as proxy of BJP. Uh, People's Conference, which is Sajjad Loan's party, Sajjad just Loan's to clarify. Party. Yes. It was the fight was till the last week of the campaigning. The fight was between national conference and the candidate Umar Abdullah yeah. against PC and the PC People's Conference was seen as a proxy of, uh, of Delhi. Yeah. Delhi. And then suddenly and this happens. Suddenly the last week of campaigning, you saw yeah. one more f figure propping up and propping up very it's strongly. It is a and uh, as I said, it it was it he, was a combination of he tools. defeated Umar Abdullah by two lakh votes while sitting in jail. And Sajjad loan uh, one lakh votes. Right. Huh? So it was a combination of two. Uh, as I said, it was a combination of sentiment yeah. and uh, sympathy that went in favor of uh, Engineer Rashid. Having said that, whatever sentiment he represents, yeah, because it came democratically, it, the mandate came democratically. Uh, the union needs, to, uh, I mean, respect that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's one more thing, and again, this is I based it on Umar Abdullah has tweeted that the jamaat e islami of Jammu and Kashmir was banned uh, and it spearheaded militancy. He has, this is his tweet I am quoting, in the valley for three, three and a half decades ago. He says it is believed that the ban on them could be lifted and they could directly contest elections in the valley or through proxy. Now I am asking you, if is that indeed so? Why would the gov government or the governor or anyone want to uh, bond jamaat e islami in the fray? Is that happening? What could it be? Do you think it should happen? I mean, it's amazing for us in two ways. Mm. Uh, an organization uh, which believed in extreme, uh, I mean, uh, ways of things, which believed in, I don't want to name uh, certain things, uh, which believed in on the other extreme, mm. is now interested or interesting Leave, trying to come into mainstream, the mainstream which they tagged as, I mean, outcast and outlaw. They said collaborators with India. Collaborators and kafirs, they would call us. Kaf kafirs. They would call you kafirs? Yes, they huh? would call us uh, kafirs. Achha. The same organization which asked for the blood of people, hmm. 
Mm. We only ask for the vote of people, <laughs> for our ideology. Uh, uh. They ask for the youth. Okay. Those youngsters are in graves. So now, are, are tilted towards the ideology which they oppose with gun. That's, that's amazing. I welcome that stuff. Uh, they have this realization after 30 years, after one lakh graves. Uh, one lakh graves. More than so, one lakh graves. Uh, so are we they saying, have that I would like to educate myself on what is the jamaat e islami in, in Kashmir. Are they linked to the so-called terror organizations which came? It's known his, for all. It's known for all. Uh, right? I'm, they had their organization. I'm asked because they, they had you know, their Kashmir is so outfit. complicated. Yes, yes. There is the seen and there is the unseen. It's yeah. always been like that, you know. Jamaat Islami had their militant outfit. I don't want to name that outfit. It's it's known for all, and that was very dominant militant outfit in Jammu and Kashmir, functioning in Jammu and Kashmir up till very recently, and which was politically very, I mean, aggressive. So it's and, interesting uh, in that the they and now it's interesting. So there that must be some credible. Uh, on the other side, why it is? I, I, why I, I why said would the it's government funny do it? Two ways now. A regime or a political party. Uh, that is BGP, which believes in, I mean, hardcore approach towards certain things, uh -huh. finds, uh, I mean, uh, Jamaat Islami acceptable. So, is very it acceptable happening? and very nationalist. Is it? I presume it's credible since Umar Abdullah has said it publicly, tweeted it publicly. I would it's credible information. I yes, it is. There is something. Is. There's a communication it? happening between the organization that is Jamaat Islami so and. Uh, this, I wonder I mean, what is I would, the I would want to see the day when Jamaat Islami comes and participates in the election in their own name as their own, own organization and that will settle many things uh, because they have won, uh, I mean, used gun against elections, used use gun, gun ag yes. against voters, used guns against candidates. Those I mean, you're all, everyone are, in Kashmir is victims. from families which have been assassinated. We are all victims. Sajjad Lone might be a proxy, might exactly. be described, but his father was assassinated. Mm -hmm. You know, and so many, your, your many, father was many, assassinated. Many of us. Huh? Many of us. Mm -hmm. And that political party at the second level, after using that extreme, I mean, a thing, they, they helped certain political parties mm -hmm. uh, in the electionary. Uh, they wouldn't contest directly, but they would mm -hmm. help certain political parties. This will settle all those, I mean, the if dust will happens, clear and... The, if Jamaat islami comes in. They will come on their own and uh, they'll be... Why would the BJP want jamaat e islami in the electoral play? Uh, I would want to see a day when jamaat e islami I would repeat. I would you think it would be? Day. Maybe it would be... It's a, good. I mean, I mean let if, them come. if there is Let's a realization... Uh, they maybe have, they're giving up guns. I hope so. That's the reason I. I <laughs> you know, maybe I it's hope, like I a massive they, surrender. They, and, they but you're saying they days. called all of you kafirs also? Uh, we can. We have bigger heart. <laughs> we have bigger heart. We have faced you know, many rougher things. Uh, there's been uh, tourism is booming suddenly, and that is one of the points that the government holds out that the uh, removal of Article 370 has worked because all the tourists can go there. So I'm asking you that how do we, what do we, mean? and it is an important one of the big important sources of livelihood for Kashmir, right? It's, it's a mistake that we make. I mean, tourism is booming. The polling percent, percentage, percentage has gone high. No, the polling so percentage, every, I believe that the Kashmiri people baffled everyone. They <laughs> yes, defied New Delhi and yes. they voted they, they, they voted in ways that New Delhi's candidates could not win. If you visited Jammu and Kashmir after 2010, hmm. between 2010 and 2014, uh, Jammu and Kashmir was, Kashmir was all pack and people turned their houses into guest houses. Mm -hmm. Between 2010 yes, and 2014, mm -hmm. we tend to forget those things. No. It was as it is right now. It was the same. It was similar because we had a patch of four years which was very calm. Mm. We contained the situation. The people of Jammu and Kashmir contained the situation. Umar Abdullah's government contained the situation, and things were very calm. And mm. tourism naturally, the result was boom in to tourism, mm. and it was such that we didn't have places and enough rooms in hotels, and mm. people turned their houses in. Uh, into guest houses, but was that a f permanent feature? No, mm. that was not. Therefore, is this a permanent feature? What is happening at the moment? No, it's not. Uh, ask us. We know mm. the reality. It's not a permanent feature. And I, though I would wish and I want this to be a permanent feature. Yeah. But the fact remains because I know the reality. I am scared. I'm. I am afraid that this is not something will feature. suddenly give. Exactly the way. Uh, I the remember that uh, those protests. That street protest, the stone throwing, mm. came out of nowhere. I covered that. 
یاتری and the tourists coming for particularly for tourism mm. i mean thing was a particular uh, category we didn't combine the two otherwise we could say show the numbers as are shown at the moment mm. any uh, person going to vishnu devi is counted as a tourist coming to jammu and kashmir but there are still everything is packed everything is but book, booked as i said this is not unprecedented this has already happened in jammu and kashmir many times but this is not a yardstick this is not a standard by which you see the reality of jammu and kashmir i am afraid as i said until the people of jammu and kashmir do not feel uh, the way they are f- feeling at the moment they feel alienated they feel disenfranchised they feel disempowered they feel they feel defeated mm-hmm. until there's there's that sense of achievement sense of being sense mm-hmm. of dignity mm-hmm. these things are not permanently addressed we want these these things to be permanently ad- addressed and these features to be permanent so this is not a permanent you know, picture receding, for the kashmir receding colonial powers hmm. kashmir pakistan hmm. india pakistan hmm. was boundaries were decided hmm. israel was created hmm. around the same time in history right, right. by the colonial powers, the powers that be hmm. and the kashmir border has remained a conflict zone pakistan got divided hmm. east pakistan became bangladesh So Kashmir has remained a conflict zone. We are seeing this terrible conflict continuing in uh, in the Gaza, Gaza, where there is a entire Middle East. Is, entire is, Middle East is in is, turmoil. No, but the there is Gaza a is ma- been, there is a massacre of people right. in Gaza by the according to the International Court of right. Justice. It is, it is. And uh, it's not Sabah Nagri mm. taking a position. It is the International Court of Justice that said that is illegal what the Israelis right. are doing. So uh, what I uh, wonder is uh, so at Kashmir also is a troubled legacy. It is. you are trapped the people's aspirations are trapped between national great games mm. geopolitical right. strategies right. Right. you know Absolutely. india pakistan uh, ideologies i mean that's what i feel Absolutely. you know Absolutely. and uh, it's 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 been like that what is the situation of a young person today in jnk what are the is employment because i also found a list. there's a certain middle class in kashmir which is relatively prosperous traditionally always been always been no there is uh, the the levels of literacy are high you yes. know there are all these many things which kashmiri society has achieved itself mm. literacy is high beautiful cultural traditions mm. Mm. you know your lal de your nature of uh, the songs mm. the culture the cuisine kashmir is a very exquisite place with mm. a very exquisite mm. cultural identity and all of that so today uh what is an aspiration of a young kashmiri what do they want what can they look forward to joining the family business or can they get out thus coming to india and looking for a job do At you the go moment, out kashmiris do not have aspirations they they are in a struggle to save themselves they are trying to come come to the terms with the new reality i mean every day there's there's a threat on their land there's a threat on their job what is the there's land a threat, threat? I call him the Viceroy, not the individual but the institution that is mm. LG, mm. Lieutenant Governor. He's for mm. me the Viceroy mm. of New Delhi in mm. Kashmir. He comes up with uh, decisions, policies, mm. and mm. decisions and orders mm. that Kashmiris so and so uh, at so and so place, Kashmiris have this much of land, they cannot have this much of land. We will take this much of land from them. and give it to the outsiders and they say it is say it is so are we seeing a settler policy <laughs> we have they 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 are openly saying they want a demographic change in in jammu and kashmir they want to identify land which they could hand over to people from outside the state and then change the the demographics demographics so there the is state. a land issue right now land issue along are that are non kashmiri allowed to own allow land in complete. kashmir sorry are non kashmiri is allowed to buy land in kashmir at the moment yes by lawyers they are oh they are okay. yes they are which is a hypocrisy in himachal pradesh you know that's cannot. why i know you cannot so but in terms of kashmir it cannot be accepted why can't an outsider 
outsider land. in terms of state come and buy land in jammu and kashmir so land is an issue while you have the same law for mm. himachal pradesh there you don't have a problem mm. but you are here you are hypocritic so Kash, the people of jammu and kashmir are in a continuous struggle for their survival mm. they want to save themselves they want to find ways how to save their future their land their jobs their jobs are open for anyone to come and we had a pool of 12 million people to comp- compete in between uh, to compete among i mean the population of jammu and kashmir now we have to compete from a pool of 1 billion 400 million people you mean within the jobs in kashmir government is thrown open for the entire nation it was not so earlier kashmir it was not like like himachal pradesh and many other places it was not like that mm. uh, there was a lot of kashmiris in the secretariat and all i remember absolutely it was it was for the people of jammu and kashmir he may be hindu she may be hindu he may be muslim yeah. she may be muslim and didn't pandits, matter there were a lot of pandits, pandits were, they, still they employed there. in government yes. service there so at the so moment, that, all of that now what is happening in that now everything is taken away from people of jammu and kashmir no, now, is it is it only from the Muslims or is it from Muslims or pundits are still have their jobs, right? I mean, this their jobs are open for anyone. Okay. Jobs are open for anyone. The resources now resources are used. The people of Jammu and Kashmir. For, I can give you an example of two or three resources. There's a there's a small scale industry with which some uh, people are try, uh, earn their livings. Mining. There's uh, mining from from mountains where they get stones yeah. and all those things stuff. Mining from rivers, mm. hand mining, not not with the machinery. You have an order, a policy imposed upon us that mining cannot be done. Had it stopped there, I would say it was okay. But mining cannot be done. At the same time, the contracts are given to the contractors from outside Jammu and Kashmir. Oh. Not, the to people, the, not to the not to the. They are not department. allowed. They are not allowed. They are not allowed. They are not allowed. No, are you sure? I'm sure. These are the rules. Kashmiris cannot bid for the mine. I mean, it's not written that Kashmiris cannot bid for the uh, mining. Yes, uh, the contractors, because they know uh, their profile is not as big as the contractors from outside, with a turnout of five thousand crore rupees, with a turnout of two hundred crore rupees, three hundred crore rupees. That local uh, laborer from that local guy who mines stuff from rivers. Has a turnout of three hundred rupees per day. Mm-hmm. Has a turnout of five hundred rupees per day. Now the criteria is unless you fall in this criteria, oh. you cannot mine. And that criteria, the uh, the uh, those particular contractors. I oh, mean, okay. uh, f- fill the in. big miners of India. I Miner. mean, as, uh, big miners of India. Small scale mining, low level mining is not allowed for the people of Jammu and Kashmir. There's a ring road coming up mm. in both in Jammu and in Kashmir. The contractor is from outside Jammu and Kashmir. It is not allowed mm. that a local can work. The labourer is from outside Jammu and Kashmir. The supply material brought on the trucks. Mm. The trucks cannot be from Jammu and but Kashmir. But labour was always required out from outside. No, didn't you? Kashmir always required labour. Not all outside. of them. Not all. Not all of them. Certain uh, kind of labour was done by people of Jammu and Kashmir. Mm. And at the moment, you can go and take your camera and take your team and go ask them. Mm. No trucks, no supplies, mm. no contract, no laborer, no contractor is allowed from Jammu and Kashmir. I mean, at least a truck supplying this material mm. could be used from Jammu and Kashmir. Nothing from that lo- locality where that land is used. Mm. Mm. Nothing. The trucks are brought from outside the state. And so what Kashmiris are, do is carpet weaving. At the moment, <laughs> shawl weaving, they do carpet weaving, <laughs> and, uh, and tourism. What is the tourism? Apple, horticulture is apple, pro- apple, uh, apple production is another thing. Uh, it has its own story. Uh, a year ago, we had truckloads of apple, which was stopped at Banihal for 15 days. It, the entire crop got destroyed. Got destroyed, and on the other side, they got apple from America and Iran. Brought that here, and the entire market and mandis were filled with those apples. No duty imposed on that. No import tax. And right now, what is the situation? The situation is the same. People of Jammu and Kashmir are not able to compete with the apple that comes from the outside. Iran and America. America. Though the though the taste is not that good, but the yeah. rate is lower. The, the so horticulture is also facing a crisis. Every sector is facing a crisis. Every sector in, in Jammu and Kashmir. The cost of living is unheard of. Really? Could go this this high. 
and her ease of living was at, at least there in Jammu and Kashmir. I mean, I have I have said it in my uh, election campaign also that at least you could never see someone forced to uh, sleep and live, uh, breathe a flyover or a bridge or in a drain. In now Jammu you're finding Kashmir. that. I mean, will in a, in a due course you will. You will. We in Jammu and Kashmir, it's not about religion. All of us at least had a plot, small little plot and a house to live in. Mm -hmm. We had a property. Then it, I mean, it could differ from what amount yeah. of property you have. No one was houseless, landless, mm. shelterless. At the moment, I was talking about the cost of living and the cost of living was at least comfortable. You could earn 300, 400 rupees a day and live like live. a middle class. Okay. Live and like now, a middle class because you had your own plot and shelter. Mm. The, the electricity, the cost of uh, uh, water and all those things was not that high. Any household which, is, which we call poor household, which would get the bijli, uh, I mean the electricity bill mm. monthly, I mean their bill would be 300, 400, 500. At the moment, it's 2,500, all of a sudden, mm. 2,500. Russian, the cost has gone. Yeah. So, the, so I won't, the cost of living has, gone, has up. gone up. Yeah, it's gone up all, but it's particularly hard in a state where there's no real industry. There's no industry, there's nothing. no manufacturing, there's no private sector. Yeah. It's a it's really just a traditional uh, few things. Horticulture you have. Horticulture, some shawls amount, and carpets. And uh, like, hand waving things, um, oh, shawls, yeah. carpets, yeah. and that's the economy that, and tourism. And tourism, That yeah. is the ecosystem. You know, you have moved the private member's bill seeking to make it full prohibition mm. of alcohol mm. and all in Jammu. I think the only Indian state is Gujarat. Mm. You're doing that in a state which also is dependent on tourism. Mm. What are your compulsions for doing that? Why? They compelled us. I mean, we had this understanding uh, that tourists do come. And it's not a forced thing. We cannot force yeah. our choice on yeah. others. We in Jammu and Kashmir, majority of us, yeah. do believe that this is something which is not advisable, we do not consume it. But there are people who come yeah. from outside, yeah. they have their own religion, they have their own understanding. Mm. For them it's okay, they can consume. Mm. We had that understanding. Therefore it was, we had the understanding and the respect. And on the other side, mm. the people visiting Jammu and Kashmir had that understanding and respect for the mm. society. Mm. No one would come and consume it in open and then behave unruly. Is that what is happening? That's what is happening and regularly happening. Mm. The amount of wine shops are Purposely I know increased. That, that I know. They have increased all over. Okay. All over. And the tourists, those who come, they, I mean, I don't know how and why they behave like that. The, they always come, some tourists somewhere, it's not just in... The number is gro growing. Huh. The, the streets of Srinagar, you can see, hmm. filled hmm. with the people who hmm. drink in open and then abuse it. They don't hmm. only drink it, they hmm. abuse it. Uh, uh, I mean, drink it to the level then uh, where they no, But what about the unruly. local population? Is there now, I was reading about uh, uh, a drug problem being created locally. I mean, can you just elaborate? Is that true? I saw one investigation on... Uh, there's a big problem of dr drug abuse in Jammu and Kashmir. And I can see a pattern and purpose in this. Tell it me. It Punjab happened. had the same problem. It happened soon after 2019. It started picking up. The uh, problem started spreading, and to the areas where the establishment has good hold, I mean, good presence in terms of army, in terms of police, in terms of para paramilitary, in terms of entire security mm -hmm. grid. I mean, if they wanted, this couldn't be imported. If they wanted, this can mm -hmm. be checked at multiple levels. No other place is has multiple layers of security and check as in Jammu and Kashmir, no other place. See? So are you we suggesting that it is allowed to reach the young people? With those multiple layers of security and check that we have in Jammu and Kashmir, if a uh, drug is supplied to Jammu and Kashmir, yeah. you, you have many institutions to question. To. Well, it's interesting. Punjab also had a militancy problem. It's now racked with this drug and problem. Because their youth were turned into drug addicts. Yeah, and yeah. I, it was visibly as, as part of the yeah, policy to uh, turn that yeah. youth into drug addicts. And that's what we, the pattern is that similar. Is, it's in disturbing to think of that happening in Kashmir. I can't believe, I can't digest and I can't take the, uh, the argument that the administration cannot stop it. You think they can stop? They can stop. Interesting. Very, very important thing you're saying. 
about the drug problem over there. I repeat, with the layers of security. That How are so many drugs Jamaica. reaching the young people who are in any case alienated? There are not That's opportunities and all. It's a disturbing scenario. Is there anything else that you, I mean, we are coming to the end of this fascinating conversation. Is there anything else that you think? Uh, we don't get this opportunity through many mediums, but since uh, yours is a genuine one and mm. accommodative, uh, not for me only, but the entire, for, for all shades, we the people of Jammu and Kashmir have, I mean, given our blood for the idea of democracy and mm. the idea of India. Yeah. And we, we have, our efforts are more than what could be a normal effort. An Indian sitting in a AC room speaking about nationalism, patriotism, I respect that, mm. but cannot equate himself or herself with a citizen of Jammu and Kashmir speaking for the same idea and standing against gun and violence, a standing against a chance of being killed and many of us mm. have been killed. Therefore, respect the shade of opinion that comes mm. from mm, the people of Jammu and Kashmir. They may be politically a bit from a different shade. Mm -hmm. They may have an idea which may not be particularly mm. uh, that of yours, but that's a shade that we were promised to have. Yeah, yeah. We, we were guaranteed that we can mm. have different shades in this country. Therefore, to conclude it, to put it in one sentence, uh, I would want to say that Article 370 is, was, and will always be an article of faith that was not anti-national <laughs> article. That was an article through which we connected, through which we got the dignity, through which we got the rights of the yeah. Indian constitution, through which we got the mm. place in the democracy of India. Therefore, what ha whatever happened on August 5, 2019 was unconstitutional, undemocratic and completely unacceptable for the people of Jammu and Kashmir. Ladies and gentlemen, the member of parliament from Srinagar, a very, very important voice. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Mm.